Hello, welcome everyone. I am Jared Haas, and today this is Best Seat at the Track, your source for everything at the track. And I am joined today by NASCAR Mailbox author and Front Stretch podcast himself, Davey Siegel. Davey Siegel is at the track. Davey, first question is, is how's the weather? Uh, right now it's solid, but I think there's about a 50% chance of rain around three to six. I'm not sure if it's going to happen. Yesterday, after the Xfinity race ended, it absolutely monsooned, uh, and I got wet going to my car. So we'll see if that happens again here today. I know the truck race was uh, interrupted, I guess you could say, a little bit by weather. So we'll see if that's the case again today. But right now, clear skies, sunny, nice weather in upstate New York. Like I said, that's good to hear. At least we got a window to get this race here. And you talk about the Xfinity race that got monsooned. The field got monsooned again by Ty Gibbs, his third Xfinity race. And this is, he's 18, let's remember that too. And he already has multiple wins this season. Davey, where do you see Ty Gibbs' future? How, like I said, what is his plan in the coming years? You got to think next year, full-time Xfinity, that would be dumb if it didn't happen. I mean, from just the fact of his talent and his performance alone, but then you also couple the fact that his last name is Gibbs and we can't ignore that. So he's going to be with Joe Gibbs Racing for probably his entire career. I mean, I don't think I'm going out on a limb by saying that. I guess if you look at a five-year plan, so to speak, full-time Xfinity next year, maybe dabbling in the Cup Series that year and maybe even the year after that. And depending on what the charter system looks like with 2311, if another Toyota team comes into the pipeline, if somebody at Joe Gibbs Racing decides to leave, retire, what have you, Carl Edwards situation, it's unpredictable. But Ty Gibbs will end up in the Cup Series with Joe Gibbs Racing. It's a matter of when, not if, but... I think we got to take our time with this one. He is 18. He is showing that he's incredibly talented. But at the same time, having a full season of sustained excellence and sustained success is something to do as well. So I'll be interested to see when they make that announcement for him being full-time next year. I think that's also a matter of when, not if, and how he does. And you bring up that good point, too, is what his plan is. Uh, I'm going to ask this follow-up question. Uh, the youngest driver to win a race is a former Joe Gibbs hot prospect of Joey Logano. Do you think he's going to beat uh, Joey Logano's record of youngest Cup Series winner, or do you think that's going to be in the cards? I don't know if top, top of my head. You probably do. How old was Joey? Was he under 20? He was under 20. He was like 19 and a half, I believe, yeah. when he won that range shortened race at Lauda. I don't think Ty's going to break that because I think that, you know, we've seen – with driver development and Joey was one of the case studies moving drivers up too quickly. Now is Todd Gibbs cup series ready today? No. Is he going to be cup series ready next year? Maybe, but I don't think that they're going to rush him up the ladder and would it be cool to get that record? I'm sure it would be, but it'd also be cool to win the Xfinity series championship next year and have a slow progression that actually makes sense to get to the cup series. So I don't think that record's going to be broken by Ty Gibbs, but I feel like if anybody were to break it, Ty could probably be that guy. Absolutely agree with that, too. So I want to at least focus our uh, action on today's uh, events, too. What happened two weeks ago, people kind of forgot about it loud and two. I've gotten yeah. under storyline was with Eric Almarola. He was battling Austin Dillon hard. He was trying to stay in the lead lap with Eric Almarola's win. Now, one RCR car is in Tyler Reddick and one RCR car is out. What do you see going on? Do you see both of them somehow getting a win? Do you see one of them just sneaking in here? Or are you seeing both of them missing the playoffs? Man, it's tough to say because if we get a new winner, that's unexpected today at the Glen. That shakes things up. Same thing with Michigan. Same thing with Indianapolis. Same thing with Daytona, which is the wild cards and the wild cards, right? So I don't know. I feel like out of those four remaining regular season races, we're probably going to see one off the board winner and one new winner, whether that's Kevin Harvick or Denny Hamlin, or whether that's Bubba Wallace or Ross Chastain. I don't know. What I do know is that RCR probably is a little puckered right now because they had both their cars in the playoffs. Now they got one barely hanging on and one on the outside looking in. And even though they're teammates, they're probably still going to brace pretty hard to get that final playoff spot. So if I was Richard Childress, I wouldn't be sleeping too well tonight because no matter what happens, I mean, I, I'd be sleeping well tonight if we win, obviously, if I'm Richard Childers. But leading up to this weekend and for the rest of the regular season, I don't know how I'm feeling because on one hand, I want to get both my cars in. On another hand, I know that if something else happens outside of my control, both my cars could be out after they both were just in. So 
that's going to be an interesting storyline moving forward to watch in this last month. So you think is uh, is a Richard Thomas car going to get a new win or both of them are going to miss the playoffs or just one going to make it? I think at this point, probably one will make it. I would lean Reddick because he's got the edge on road courses, in my opinion. Uh, but again, Austin Dillon's pretty good at Daytona. You never know what could happen there. But if you made me put money on it, which if you do gamble responsibly, people, uh, I'd probably say one makes it in and I'd go with Tyler Reddick. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a uh, point, too. Is Reddick's actually the underdog this season. Austin Dillon's performed one position better at road courses mm. compared to Kyle Reddick. They are close. Mm. It's 17 versus 18. Um, Interesting. But, you know, it's going to be – we'll see in these coming weeks, too. Um, Davey, I'm going to do our next segment. You know me as a stat connoisseur, like a nugget connoisseur, too. And the segment's called Stump or Bump. So you're either going to get stumped by this question or you're going to bump it out of the way to take the victory. Are you ready for this? I'm born ready. Let's go. All right. So last time that NASCAR ran the race in Watkins Glen was in 2019. We know Chase Elliott won that race pretty dominant fashion, leading good majority of laps too. Which one of these drivers, I'll give you multiple choice, did not lead a lap in the 2019 running of Watkins Glen? Is it A, Martin Shrex Jr., B, Kyle Busch, C, Kyle Larson, or D, Paul Menard? Which did not lead a lap? Which one did not lead a lap in the 2019 running, correct? Uh, I feel like Paul Menard's a trick question. So I'm going to say he did lead a lap. Uh, Truex is pretty good on road courses, as we know. Kyle Busch, also pretty stout. Larson, he was always been solid, but wasn't always solid with Chip Ganassi Racing. I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say the answer is Kyle Larson. He did not lead a lap in 2019. Am I right? Davey, you... Got stumped. Oh, it was Kyle Busch did not lead a lap. I know that Paul Bernard, uh, Kyle Larson, and Martin Truex Jr. did lead a lap, so you were close with the Kyles, but unfortunately, you got stumped by that question. So, I like Damn. I said, I'll give you a good effort. Um, before Thank we go you. here, I like to hear your prediction. I know you shot your shot, um, on the podcast saying Chase Elliott's gonna win. That's my prediction with myself, too. Who are you predicting to finish second? First loser, eh? Well, I actually mentioned him a little bit earlier. He's been pretty stout on road courses this season. Had a top 10 at Road America. Had a top 10 at Coda. There's a chance of rain in the forecast. And in Coda, he did pretty well in the rain. He just got announced as a second driver for track house for this season, for next season. I'm going to go a little off the board. Ross Chastain, this past week was National Watermelon Day. They announced the track house deal on National Watermelon Day. Why not have a melon man finish in second place? So I'll go a little bit off the board. Chase wins, but Ross Chastain comes home P2. I do agree with that for you. I mean, I mean, still a second place for Ross Chastain this season is going to be that warrants a watermelon smashing. Um, I'm probably going to go more conservative route. I'm actually going to say Martin Truex Jr. is going to finish second place. But I mean, we're going to make more see. sense. Yeah. I mean, they've, Trex has performed well, and he needs to, like I said, Toyota needs to get back in their rhythm. I think this is going to be a good track to go with it. So, Davey, I do appreciate you dropping on. Like I said, go enjoy the Go Bowling at the Glen. And from everybody from FrontStretch.com, follow us at, at FrontStretch on Twitter. Uh, and follow Davey, who's at the track, at Davey Center. And thank you very much. From the best seat at the track to the best view in the web, I'm Jared Haas. Enjoy the race. <laughs>